We what love hip hop. Like I'm here. We love hip hop. I got my man's over here. He just moved to Canada. He just came to the city of Montreal. Um, he comes from a long ways away. We got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh uh, yeah, fam. Um, I'm Kika. I'm origin from Cameroon, and um, I've been in Canada for about one and a half month. I'm moving from Ukraine, so I mean everybody know knows what is going on in, in Ukraine. So um, I came out of some certain circumstances. Yeah, and well, you just had a kid, so you just had a Canadian kid too, right? Yes, bro. Great, so I, I gotta give you your flowers there, bro. That's a big step. Thank you. What was that? My daughter, like? my daughter was born on um, uh, last week, Thursday. Yeah. So she's one week old. She was born in Canada. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's a lot. Yeah. All right, bro. So here's what I want to run on the interview, bro. So basically, we're going to go, we're going to start off, we're going to get a little history of you, we're going to get everyone introduced to your story. And then towards the end, we're going to start to go to the hip hop stuff. You cool with that? I'm cool with that. All right. So first off, where were you born? Where'd you grow up? Um, I was born in Cameroon. Um, that is Central Africa. And um, like, I just want to place my camera over here so I, no worries, I, I no talk comfortable, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I was born in Cameroon in the, in the um, southwest region of Cameroon. That is, is a small city called Kumba. And so what was it like out there when you were living there? Do you, like, do you remember much from out there? Yeah, sure, I do. Um, I left Cameroon when I was 24 years old. Okay, okay. So I remember a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, give, give me some of, like, because okay, I'm from Canada, you know, I, I don't know much about a place like Cameroon other than, like, what you see about Africa and, like, TV and stuff like that. So, like, what's an average day like? Like, how, what was your living like? Just sort of give me the experience of what it was like living there. Um, Growing up, my grandfather, I, I grew up with my grandfather. He he was a farmer, mm -hmm. you know, he was a farmer. And the, the day to day was wake up in the morning, go to school, come back after school, go to the farm. We, uh, my grandfather was cultivating um, cacao coffee. Yeah. So we, I spent a lot of time in the agriculture with my grandfather. Then my mom, she was a hustler. So it, it's a really small town, you know, and to make it big, you have to go to the big cities. In Cameroon, we have the big cities like Douala, Yaoundé. Um, so my mom, she was a hustler. She left the, the, the small city and she moved to a bigger city, you know, like, and she started doing big things. She took me after, she took me over to her and... She took me when I was seven years old. She she took me from my grandfather. And I I, I grew up in Douala. That is the economic mm -hmm. capital of Cameroon. And I started um saying things, doing a little bit of hustling, you know, here and there, trying to find my way out and had little troubles around. Then my mom did, she realized that I like doing music. By the way, I am the only child, so I was kind of spoiled a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, she she gave me money to buy my beats. She gave me money to pay for the studio, and I, I just started rapping and doing it because I loved it. And from there, it just kicked off like that. Uh, so, so from like Cameroon, like what what kind of music are you guys listening to out there? Is it like you know whatever the the top one hundred, like the mainstream stuff, or like what kind of music? Uh, we we have uh, we have music from home, you know. Okay. That is Makosa. It's called Makosa, and they they are a little bit of different gender of music. So we have Bikusi, we have Makosa, we have Ben Sikin, and we have a little bit of blues, but it's mm -hmm. Afro blues. So. Cameroon is a multicultural country. We this is the only 
this is one of the only countries in Africa where you're going to see Muslims going along easily with Christians. Yeah, yeah. In Cameroon. Yes, we don't have a problem with that. We peacefully, like, and by the way, we, we also have a very huge agricultural impact in Africa. Like, I, I can proudly say 50% of the food that people eat in Africa comes from Cameroon. Okay, so you're saying it's like, even in the poorer places there, there's a lot of food to go around and stuff like that? There is. Like I said, my grandfather was a farmer, but we never had a day that we didn't have food on the table. We always had something to eat, but, you know. And as far as language, like, uh, what are the most spoken languages out there? I know English, French, like, are those the main two, or is it, they must have some sort of their own African language as well? Yeah, um... Every village is in Cameroon because we have about, if I'm not wrong, we have about 360 tribes. Okay. So just imagine there's 360 different dialects. That's insane, yeah. <laughs> and I don't even speak my own dialect, you know. I mean, I speak French and English. That's, the, yeah. that's, the, that's what everyone from Cameroon knows. That's a business language. If you want to make business in Cameroon, you should speak French and English. Yeah. And the dialects are just things, just does that stuff that goes on in the villages. Okay. So you're saying like people living in the city, most of them know their English or French pretty well. And people, you know, who are living more in a village sort of have their own dialect because that's what's spoken out there. That is correct. That's crazy, bro. That's awesome. So I know you, you said you were in Cameroon till you were 24. And then when you were 24, and what made you decide to leave? Uh, you know, I wanted to study abroad because um, I, I was a kind of person that I wanted a better education for myself. I knew that the educational system in my country was not the best because like I've seen people go to school, graduate from university, then still jobless. Mm -hmm. You know, but when people go out to study in the UK, in France, in Germany, they come back, they got good jobs. Mm -hmm. So I told my mom that I wanted to study out of Cameroon and come back so I can have a good jobs like those people. So that's why I decided to go out. That's crazy. So when you decided to go out, where did you decide to go to? Um, initially, I wanted to go to Canada. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I had an admission from Humber University okay. in Ontario. Yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, I had an admission. I, I still have the letter of admission in my bag, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. But you know what? I was late for the interview, five minutes late. Oh, and they did you dirty. They told me to come back <laughs> one year after. <laughs> I couldn't wait. You know, I couldn't yeah. wait. So I decided to go to use the easy route and I decided to go to Ukraine. Okay, so it's easier to, to go to Ukraine then? It's less stringent, I'm guessing? Yes, um, move from, from, from where I'm from, from Cameroon, it's easy to get a Ukrainian visa, you know, a student visa. It, it was easy to get it because all you needed to do was to pay your, your tuition fee and show proof of you know, that you, you got money to support yourself yeah, yeah. Okay. doing your studies. And, and that was it. That was so, it. So what year did you, you go to Ukraine? Um, I, I left Cameroon. That was November 2010. Oh, wow. So it was a while ago, right? Yeah, that was a long time ago. So what was it like? I'm imagining going from Cameroon to Ukraine. That must be a huge difference. So what was the big differences from from that, you know, like, mm -hmm. cultural shock, cultural, <laughs> yeah, I failed it. People told me, but I didn't, I didn't take, I didn't think it was that serious, you know, so I, I, I just got to Ukraine and I was still naive. I've never been out of my country that, mm. that far away, you know, and I've never been in a country that is pro-white. I mean, yeah. to be specific, you know, <laughs> so it was a little bit cultural shock for me. Then 
as I spent more time in Ukraine, I started to see the, the good side, you know, and so. Okay, so when you say like um, a, a pro-white country, did you have to deal with a lot of racism? Is that what you're getting at? Oh, I, actually, I had I had to deal with some, you know, I had to deal with a lot, a lot. And um, why why I say pro white is because this is this this are, these are countries that are from the Soviet Union back mm -hmm. back you know, and it's not it's not they don't know too much about black people they haven't seen enough a lot you know so being a black person over there people still look at you like you are something new mm -hmm. they want to touch you they want to touch your hair they, they want to like where you from you know like they still they don't really they don't get it so it's new to them so and some of them know already who is a black person so they know you come from africa and they're not surprised to to see you they talk to you they, they like to to sit and have coffee with you but some of them they don't know they just like avoid you and but at the same time, they have people that are strictly nationalities and patriotic and they don't want to mix. Yeah. So these people, they are going to do everything to make you uncomfortable so you will leave. Mm -hmm. That is the goal. They want you to leave their country because they, they see you like a foreigner, you coming into their culture, and they, they feel that you want to change things mm -hmm. and they don't want those changes they just like it the way it is so yeah. they are going to try to make you uncomfortable either by threatening you beating you you know stabbing you whatever they can do to make you scared and you book a flight ticket and go back to where you come from so it's something like that but yeah. they they are good people and they are bad people, you know. Yeah, I think it's like that everywhere. Um, so what would you say are some of the craziest experiences you had, like in terms of that stuff into Ukraine, you know, people who didn't really feel that you should be a part of the culture? Do you have to deal with any specific circumstances? Yeah, um there there was I um no, before talking with, you know, before I go on saying all these things, I, I just want to say that I have very good friends in Ukraine. You know, I got friends that um, they have helped me a lot when I was down, when I was broke. You know, I know some really good Ukrainian people. My wife is a Ukrainian. And what is going on right now in Ukraine, I don't think that they deserve what is happening to them you know even though i have been treated sometime in the past by some ukrainian people not fairly i still think that what is going on now is not what is supposed to be happening so now that we get that out of the way let me talk about my experience with racism in ukraine um there was a time i almost got killed i was coming back from the studio mm -hmm. you know and there were two guys that they attacked me. I don't know if they knew who I was or they were following me, but as soon as I hit a corner in the, in the dark, they attacked me and they, aimed, they really wanted to kill me. Like that was something intentionally to, to end with, to put an end to my existence because when my wife is a doctor, so when she saw the, the wounds that I had on my head, she told me that, listen, this, these people that attack you, they were aiming for the vein, the vein that you got right here connected to the brain. Yeah, yeah. They wanted, yeah, that's where they were aiming for. But because I had my headset, my, my, my um, earphones, you know, the one that you got on, the type like that, they didn't get to the target and it slide and they missed. Bro, it was a blind attack from behind. I didn't see them coming. Mm -hmm. And they had these knuckles, metal. Yeah. And I, 
I had seven stitches on my head. I, I got pictures. I will send them to you. So when you, well, I mean, you can look at them. I got videos. I got stuff. And that's just one of the few attacks that I had. I know people that were attacked when when they were being um, do it at the metro, trying to trying to catch a metro. They were pushed. They were pushed onto the, the railways as the, the train was coming. You know, I've I've, I've seen crazy things. I've been with my wife in the supermarket and a three group of guys there they, they tried to attack me saying racist slurs and words mm -hmm. and trying to provoke me they're trying to make me to fight them because when the police show up they will say that it was a fight and i started it but my wife said no calm down don't do it just let it go and we just walked through the back door from the supermarket so that you're was saying, the so you're saying like out there you mostly there's not much recourse for it you're kind of just stuck fighting when you can and just dealing with it um i would say that the best way to deal with racism in places like that like russia ukraine and romania or maybe belarus belarusian you know these places they are they are not so well managed by the government and they are corrupted so if you're going to be fighting every racist person that you get an encounter with the police is not going to be on your side 99.999% mm -hmm. of the time if you don't have a friend that works with the police you're not going to get justice yeah they are corrupt very very corrupted so in that is why we as black people that were living in those places we don't try to fight back we don't try we just try to avoid it try, try we try to make sure that it doesn't happen we stay alert you know try not to go to the places that we're not supposed to be you know what i mean not not to get trapped by those kkkk or whatever so we know where, where to go, where not to go, when when to be back home, when to be out, stuff like that. So, I mean. I mean, that's crazy that you had to live like that. Like, that sounds like what it was, you know, out in like here in America in like 1950. You know? Yeah, I know. There's definitely still racism nowadays, but nothing, nothing as overt like that. Like, that's crazy. Fuck. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine. You wouldn't believe it, but it happened. It still was going on. I mean, when when you know, like, I would say I was living good. I was living good in Ukraine. After all these bad experiences, I was there for 12 years. And I would say the last, the last five years of my life in Ukraine, I already knew what I'm supposed to do. When I go out from my house, my home i'm like okay i'm gonna get this get this done get this done and i'm back home I, I don't have no business to do over there over there and that was it so so like i've met a few ukrainians before um i know my yeah. business in ukraine like many many years ago i'm gonna be honest you're the first like you know what people think of when they see a ukrainian like a white russian looking man you know um as far as like cultural minorities and people from outside of the country is there a lot of immigrants in ukraine or is it a very small population um lately before the war yeah, uh, the war yeah. yeah before the war started in ukraine in 2022 there were a lot of immigrants in ukraine Okay, like yes, there was, there was a lot. what sort of countries did people immigrate from? Um, Turkey. Okay. Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Turkey, Nigeria. We have a lot of Nigerians in Ukraine. There were a lot of Nigerians over there. A lot. That's crazy. Because when most people picture Ukraine, you know what I'm saying? That they're picturing the stereotypical Ukrainian man. They're not really picturing like all the cultural people that might be coming over from Africa and places like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we we had um, African parties in Kiev. And you Political go to parties or like you're saying like, no, like um, African party, like, you know, not political parties. I mean, like, club. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
you know? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I would never picture that in Ukraine. <laughs> oh, man, insane. it's crazy. It's, it, 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 there was a lot of Nigerians there. And you know Nigerians, bro. They Everywhere they go, they do their thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Nigerians... <laughs> Man, I have a lot of Nigerians' friends. Like, they just go in and shut it down. That's crazy. Okay, so I want to move a little bit. And, I, like, I obviously have to talk about this. You can just talk about the parts that you want to. So I know that you, you've been in Ukraine for the entire part of the war, not just the last year. You were there in 2014 when Russia initially invaded. Um, want to just talk to us about that? Like, what's your experience been? Um... My experience from 2014. Well, like let's start there, and then we can move up to more recently. Um. Okay. Like, hmm. You know when this when this whole thing started in 2014, I was um I was in Crimea. That is um. Oh my god. Yeah. That was where everything happened. Yeah. When I came to Ukraine in 2010. I arrived in Simferopol. It's a city in Crimea. And um, I was there for four years. I was living there for four years. I met my wife in Simferopol and everything was fine. And people in Crimea, they speak Russian language. They don't speak Ukrainian. They, they, kind, of, they kind of feel that they are Russians, you know, that, that is why it was easy for Russians to take Crimea because the people there already had the, the, the mentality of Russians. So, so um, the revolution in Ukraine in 2014, I was, I, was, I was right there when everything happened to me. I wasn't paying that much attention because I had other problems in my life. Crazy. <laughs> yes, bro. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm a political person that I was paying so much attention. Bro, I was, I was hungry. I was trying to put food on my yeah. table, you know? <laughs> But so like when it like when it went from being Ukrainian to Russian, did you stay or did you leave? Like what would happen? I left. Okay. I had to leave because I didn't want to be with Russia. When I came to Ukraine, I had a Ukrainian visa and my goal was to be with Ukraine initially. That was my whole goal. And I didn't want to be with Russia because like, like, I mean, I don't have anything against them until the war really started now, but I don't really like the way things are being done in Russia. I'm not a fan of that. I don't. I don't think you have to justify. No, no yeah, one so, in Russia. I don't think. I don't. I don't like it. I didn't. I never wanted to be part. Of, I knew, I didn't want to live in Russia, so I had to leave. I took my girlfriend, and we left. We went to a city called Lviv, and the funniest thing is that when we left. Crimea, I lost all my friends that I had in Crimea, the friends that were pro-Russians. They started, they started mocking me, saying that, oh, you left, you left us. So you prefer the Ukrainians. They call the people in Lviv, Bandera. They say, you, you are Bandera. And the, the Russians people say that Bandera, they eat babies. They say I am now Bandera, that I'm, I've, I've joined the Ukrainian people, the fascists, the fascists, that's how they call them, that they are very bad people. You know what? When I went there to Lviv, I saw something different. The people showed me love. They welcomed me, you know? Even though not everyone liked me, I don't expect everyone to like me everywhere I go, but when two people or three people show me love, I appreciate it. And I decided to make an album called Black Bandera. If you see where I'm going, that's why my first album in Ukraine was called Black Bandera, to tell the people in Crimea that since you have decided to label me a bandera, I'm now taking it from 
accepting it. I am black and there. That's great. That was like to spit on their face. You know, like I am what you're trying to call me. That's what I am, man. The album was received gloriously. The, the people love it. Everybody loved it in Ukraine till today. The, the soldiers are listening to those songs. They are they, they are still sending me messages like, bro, we love that album. And it's a little bit political if you see where I'm going, mm -hmm. because there's a song on that album, Bandera. And that song is really, really makes the Russian people angry. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could understand the comments when you go on YouTube, you read the comments, you you if only you could understand Russian, you <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've seen on YouTube you've had to take a lot of your comments off because I turn it off. I turn yeah, it off, bro. I, I, yeah, <laughs> the, a lot of hate from Russian people. <laughs> so, like, let's fast forward to uh, a little over a year ago when the war kicked off again. Because after 2014, they took over Crimea and that, which wasn't that big of a deal because, like you said, there was very Russian there already. Um, yeah. What ha like what was your experience when it had what happened more recently? Um, uh, you know, before the war, um, I would say something. Um, in 2014, when Russia took Crimea from Ukraine, they say that it was an election. That was that was there was no election. They took it. They took it overnight. So when they did that, the Ukrainian soldiers were not ready. They were not ready. They had not no no experience in fighting back. So in from 2014 to 2020, the, the Ukrainian soldiers have been practicing. There was a war going on in a, in a, in a city called Donbass in, in Ukraine, Donbass. So there was a war going on there for all these years these six years but the media was not talking about it that much because it wasn't that big of a topic and till 2021 after the, the the covid putin started making moves he started bringing more soldiers to the border lines and the west started getting involved putin knows that if if ukraine goes to the west with nato He's going to be at push to the wall. That's what he knows. So I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a genius. I don't need to to read books to understand that. U Ukraine is a very strategic country. I mean, in the way it's been positioned on the map, and Russia. In Russia needs Ukraine because if Ukraine goes to NATO, they, the NATO is going to use Ukraine <clears throat> as a as a how to play like a front for them to attack Russia. Yeah. So this is basically what has been going on in the background and till 2022 when I was in Kiev because I moved from Lviv to Kiev with my wife, but she had a job in a hospital in Kiev. Then we moved there. And when when they when they was when people were telling me that there's a war coming on soon you have to leave i was like you crazy there's nothing coming nothing's gonna happen i was telling my friends from nigeria that nothing's gonna happen they said oh bro you got to leave carry your back or more you got to move i'm like bro nothing is gonna happen that's he just bluffing and in the middle of the night on the 24th of february my wife wake me up saying that her friend told her that they have attacked already and we need to move Shout out to our sponsors, Astro Pink. Always coming with that loud, loud. Check them out on their website, myastropink.com, or you can hit them up on Instagram at astro underscore pink. If you know, you know. It was, it was, it was right there, right there, right. Let's go, 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 and move from Kiev back to Lviv on the road. Then we got to Lviv, had to move to the border. Poland, Medica, that's a border called Medica. We had to move to the border. And bro, there were so many people. You cannot imagine. I've never been in such a situation. We had to, we had to move, walk. We left the car and we had to trek 
like 30 kilometers. 30 kilometers. I had, I had my, my, my wife, my, my little boy, he was seven years old and people were just abandoning their stuff, their cars, everybody like, it was, it was crazy, you know. Too, too many people on the road, like, I, I can't even explain it with words. I mean, you have to be there to see it for yourself, you know, and yeah, yeah, it's, but when we got to the Polish border, there was a lot of humanitarian um, help for, from the, from the, from the um, Polish government and the, the people were really helpful and they took us in, they, they gave us food, they, they gave us places to sleep. They said, we, we, you can use the buses to go where, wherever we want to go, right there at the border. If you need a bus to go anywhere in Europe, like you just, you can go to Berlin, you can go anywhere you want to go. The buses were right there, ready to go. And that was something that I really admired that, that the, the Polish government was pulling strings and trying to do things, you know, to help. And my mother-in-law, she lives in Poland, so we decided to stay with her. So it's it was stressful that first day. And after that, you know, I got friends in Ukraine. They are they are they are men, they are not women, and Ukraine doesn't let the men to go out. Only the women leave. The men stay and fight. So it's a must. So I have friends in Ukraine that once in a while I send them some money because they need to buy some boots. They need to buy some safety helmets, you know, some stuff like that. Once in a while I send a little money, $100, $200, just to help to see what they can do with it. And because those are my friends, those are my friends. Like I, for, the, for 12 years in Ukraine, I've, I've made really good friends with some people. So it's it's been difficult me living and seeing what is happening there and i feel bad that they cannot leave they have to stay back and fight but um i respect them for for what they are doing fighting for their own country you know like we thought you russia was going to take ukraine 24 hours like everything was going to go down quick and fast it's been one year already so i feel positive that this war it might not end soon, but Russia is not going to take Ukraine the, the way that they thought that it was going to happen. Like, Ukraine is, is solid. I believe this war is going to end bad for Ukraine. There's a lot of damages, a lot of people going to die, and there's going to be a lot of money back for reconstruction. But at the same time, I think Putin is not going to take Ukraine. He's not going to take it. So By the way, yeah. speaking of Putin, there's an arrest warrant out there for Putin. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's going to arrest him? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should just grab some. <laughs> <laughs> They, they should go get him. I don't know how they want to do it. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, let's 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 focus on something a little more positive towards now. So, yeah. you're in Poland. How did you get to Canada? Like, how did how did that go? Uh, in Poland, I was I was living with my mother-in-law, and we got there. I didn't want to move around too much because I'm the type of person that when I go somewhere. I want to make sure that I've I've seen the I've used all my resources. I mean, with connections of people, I try to see what I can do, what's the best, what's available. So when I got to Poland, I'm like, I will stay here for a couple of months and I will try to connect with people and see what I can benefit from the hip hop community in Poland, then I, I can go to Germany, I can go to France. I mean, it's Europe. You take a train, you go where you want to go. So so I stayed there and um, I was there for like three months. Then my wife told me that there is a, um, 
there's a program. Canada has launched a program for Ukrainian families that are running away from Ukraine because of the war. So we decided to apply for that program and it took a long time for the application to be approved. We waited for like hmm, three months, about three to three to four months, something like that. And it got approved and we have to buy our flight tickets ourselves. The Canadian government um, offers shelters when you arrive and uh, they offer you some money to start up with and they, you just have to get a job by yourself. You just have to do things by yourself. So mm. we use that program and we decided to come over to Canada. I mean, like I was thinking about it for some time. I'm like, man, I wanted to stay in Europe. I was like, my wife is a doctor and I know that in Canada, they, they need doctors. She has a bright future in Canada. <laughs> we need so, doctors, nurses, all that. So I'm like, okay, let me not think about myself. Let me not only think about my, because I can go to France. I will be good. France is a colony of my country. I'm a Cameroonian. I speak French. It will be all right for me, but she will not be. She will not be there. So I'm like, okay, let's go to Canada where she can, she can um realize her dreams and maybe i can make new connections with my music and i can we can both excel in our careers something like that that's awesome bro so what has it been like in canada for you since you got there since you got here it's been i would say it's been challenging like since I came to Canada, I'm still living off. I'm still living off the money that I made before coming to Canada. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm working already, but I haven't received my first Canadian salary, if you know what I mean. So yeah, they're making you wait like thirty days to get it or whatever. <laughs> that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they just. Yeah, there's a lot. Of I don't know how long I gotta wait to start getting my salary, but I'm still working. So I'm just living off the money that I made. And you just had to so fuck. You got a lot of shit going like that, eh? I have a lot of shit going on. My wife just gave back to my daughter. And I got music videos that I want to do. I'm trying to collaborate with CY. And I'm I'm trying to I want to go to studios and make new music. I got a lot of things to do, but I can't just I can just throw the money out there like that because yeah. my I have rent to pay in Ukraine for the same apartment that I'm living now. I was paying like five hundred dollars in Ukraine, but in Canada I'm paying one thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah. That is a big that is a big change. Like you know, so I have yeah. to reduce my expenses. I need to I need to you know watch out. So like. Um... Go ahead, like, talk, you know, we've been talking about your history here. Talk to us a little bit more about your music and, like, what you've had going on. It's like, you know, I've obviously looked through your music and stuff, and you have quite the catalog. You've been rapping for a long time. You have some tracks with some pretty good numbers, you know? Talk to us about that. Um, Music-wise, I've been, I started rapping in, um, what was that, 2023? 2023 that that's i mean like officially when i really started doing this you know mm -hmm. but back in 2021 i was just doing freestyles me and my homies in school we just like you know picking it freestyle but um i've been doing this for like 20 years now 10 toes down still holding my own doing it by myself i don't have no record deal no record level i'm not trying to get a record deal you know, because I know what comes with it. And if one is going to show up, I mean, it's only right to take it, but I'm not desperate at the same time. So given the fact that I'm, I was doing what I'm doing in Ukraine, there was not much there for a black guy like me. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had record levels in Ukraine, but they're not going to sign a black guy, you know. 
man, let's be let's be real. Like they're not gonna sign me because I don't rap on Ukrainian language. They they they're gonna sign a rapper that raps on Ukrainian language, and that is a white guy. So, and I, I don't feel bad. I, I don't take it personal. Like, oh, you don't want to sign? No, I, I did my own thing. So, I've done a lot on my own, and I feel like coming to Canada now. I have to forget about whatever I've been doing. I have to start from scratch. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's challenging. It's it makes me realize that. I've put in so much work and at this point I'm nobody and I need to prove to so many people that I can do this. It's exciting. It's experimental. I want to try it, you know. I'm willing to challenge myself and prove some people that don't know me that I deserve their attention. At the same time, I'm not gonna put full focus on this because I don't wanna I don't wanna be the type of artist that oh right now I just came to Canada. I'm I, I'm I'm gonna be jumping on every show, on every opportunity that shows up I, because I'm I'm desperate, I'm hungry for fame, you know, like I'll I'll take it easy. It shows up. If it makes sense, I'm gonna do it. I'm 37 years old, so I'm not gonna be jumping around like a 20 year old rapper, 25 year old rapper. So I'm a grown ass man, mm-hmm. and I would just like to do the things that falls in my schedule, and that it doesn't have to pay me, you know. Like it, it but if it pays me, I appreciate it. But I'm not just gonna be jumping around trying to grab every opportunity that comes with you know but i'm just trying to say that i'm available yeah yeah all right bro well um so i've asked pretty much all my questions bro is there anything else you want to talk about um you (laughs) you cover whatever you want if there's anything else i would like to talk about a little of you know, Montreal hip hop scene, which you already told me about it. And um, I'm looking forward to performing with CY on the 1st of April. Yeah, you got that show coming up? Yeah, we got a show coming up on the 1st of April and I'm going to be performing. He he texted me, to he sent me a DM today mm-hmm. on Instagram and he was asking me if I'm if I'm ready for the show, I'm like, bro, I've been ready. I've been ready. So I will go over there. I will do it because you, you are an honest guy and CY is an honest guy. And I just, it's only right for me to, to show what I can do. You know, Mm -hmm. you are putting so much effort to, to make, to make people to know me. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, listen, bro. You, I'm not gonna lie. You have a crazy story. <laughs> not, not every, not everybody, you know, has been in like places that have been invaded by the Russians, and you know. So I mean, that helps. But no, I know it's that plus the music. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you did pretty good numbers on a lot of your songs, and like, you know, I looked through your catalog. You have some good music. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's the culmination of everything. You know, you're moving out here, so. I try and help everyone out here in the scene that I can that has something worthwhile, you know? And like I explained explained to you when we talked on the phone, like, you know, it's it's a little different out here, you know? Toronto is more the place for English hip-hop, and, you know, Montreal is more the place for French. But, like, you know, you can outreach sort of both and do your thing Uh like that, you know? And, I mean, we're right beside the U.S., which is the biggest market for hip-hop that there is, you know? I know that. So, I mean, keep pushing. It's going to be challenging for, you know, it, 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 it could be challenging for someone that is studying now, coming from somewhere that, uh, somewhere like Ukraine, you know, for me, but it's not, part, it's not impossible. Mm-hmm. It's not impossible. So 
I am I am ready for for any stage. I've performed in Poland. I've performed in Ukraine. I I can proudly say that with my chest up. I can say that I was the first black rapper in Ukraine, bro. That you can you, you can you can you can talk to Ukrainian people that listen to hip hop. Ask Kika. They will tell you that. Oh, Black Bandera. They will tell you that. That guy, he got balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will tell you that. Because what, what I did, you know, you probably don't know the, the, the impact and the meaning of that Bandera, bro. Like, if you do a little bit of research, you're going you're gonna, to, like, feel why it was so, um, you know what I mean? It it made the Russians angry. Yeah, like I was the first black rapper in Ukraine. First. I mean mainstream, on the ground, I was the first. My son was playing the radios. I performed in the biggest trap festival in Ukraine, Salat. There were six thousand people, and I was the headliner in 2017. That's crazy. Is there a big hip hop scene like for English hip hop, like local English hip hop in Ukraine or is that not? Like no, no, there is not. It's only Ukrainian hip hop, but you know why? Because I made so much noise with my album to the extent that they wanted to see me on stage. Okay, that's crazy. Do you, do, do you know what it means like to be a black guy from Africa and you're in Ukraine and you rap on English and people don't even understand <laughs> what you're imagine, rapping about? Bro, I, I, I definitely <laughs> can't relate to that a whole lot, but I can imagine. People don't understand what you're rapping about, but there you are on the stage rapping on English and they just, they just like, they just, you know, vibing, vibing with you. Yeah. That's, that's music. That's music. That's what I did. Yeah, and you know what I've seen too? I've seen in some of your music, um, you do some music in French too, right? I, I do. Up a couple of tracks there. How yeah. often do you rap in French? Um, I don't really like rapping in French. I just do it to challenge myself because my country, people speak French and English. So sometimes people tell me like, Guy, if you rap in French aussi, tu es Camerounais. Il faut rap en français. Oh, ah bon? Okay. Je rap en français. <laughs> My family tells me the same thing, bro. You know? <laughs> the exact same thing. They okay. get so mad at me for being the one who speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. No, tu sais, c'est parce que les gens pensent que, les gens pensent que nous ne pouvons pas rapper en français. Si je rap pas en français, c'est pas parce que je ne peux pas rapper en français, c'est parce que c'est pas mon marché. Les gens qui écoutent ma musique ne comprennent pas français. Mais eux ne comprennent pas ça. People that listen to my music don't understand French. Mm -hmm. They don't even know where to start when you start speaking French. But they don't understand that. So that's why I rap more on English. So anyway, you ask for French, I will give you French, but it's not my priority. Well, I mean, I think I think living in Montreal and like Quebec in general, I think it's definitely worth putting some out there. I mean, mm -hmm. like it's a huge market for French hip hop out here. You know, like uh, the guys who are doing the most views out here are French. You know, you have some guys who steadily can put out millions of views every song that are French out here. So, you know, it's worth doing both. That's the way I look at it. I'm going to do both. I love doing it in French, too. I mean, it takes me a lot of time to write my French, you know. Yeah, yeah. It takes me longer time than when I do it in English. But when it comes out, it's nice. When I yeah, do it... Well, I yeah. I mean, for sure, when you're working with your second language that like it's not your preferred language, you have to put that extra little bit of effort to make sure it comes out. That is, that is, that is like that. I've, I've wrapped in French, too. And it's like you can't mess stuff up like you would while you're just speaking and people be OK with it. It needs to come out like you're, you're perfect for it to actually sound. Good. Yeah. But yeah, no, I can feel what you're saying on that, bro. But no, I'm, I'm happy that, that, that you brought came to Montreal. You know, it's a good city. There's a lot of stuff here, you know, there's obviously no war going on. There's some bullshit with the Canadian government that you'll have to get used to. 
I don't think uh, I think they're they're a little more liberal and this bullshit Bro. you're from. You're gonna have to get used to that. You're gonna have to be a little more politically correct, I'm sure. But I mean, if you can get over that, bro, Canada's a good place, bro. They got a lot going on. And like, I don't think there's I don't think there's gonna be bullshit more than the one that I have in my country. For sure, for sure. Yeah, because my president he's been there for about sixty years. He's been president for 60 years. You're saying in Cameroon, right? That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, you should just, you you probably would just kill yourself if you were living there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, bro, that's insane. <laughs> All right, bro. So we've been on for a while, bro. I really appreciate the interview. Uh, I really I like do. talking to you about all the story and stuff, bro. And like I said, I, if there's anything else I can help you with, like, you know, in terms of hip hop out here, you know, I got you. I'm always going to push everybody in the city. And like I said, I hooked you up with CY. He's a good guy. Anyone else out here who wants to start out doing shows and stuff, you know, CY is the guy who you should hit up for sure. Like, you know, that's you know who I've been here. listening to lately? Who's that? Below the kid. Yeah. He's I've been listening to that guy, man. <laughs> I like his music. You gotta get right. You gotta get right. <laughs> yeah, I like his music, bro. I like his music. I've been listening to his to his music lately. I, he kind of have a he has a vibe to it different, you know, it's different. You feel that he's real. What he's saying is real. He's been through, you know, he's been through that shit. Yeah. So I like when rappers do it like that, you know. I just want to listen to this. Like, you know, whatever, you know, I like when someone comes from the heart. Yeah, it's yeah, different. Well, bro, fuck. shout out to him, bro. That's my homie. Shout right out there. to him, bro. He can be talking all the time. So, yeah, bro, like I said, appreciate the interview. I hope you have a blessed night. I know you got to get up early in the morning. I know we kept you waiting a little bit. But Thank like, you, bro. You know, congrats again on the kid, bro. You, you, got, Thank you, you got a Canadian citizen born here, bro. So now you're stuck here, bro. They can't kick you out ever. They, you're stuck. <laughs> I ain't going no way. <laughs> it's a girl. It's a girl. It means that I'm going to be a badass daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, I appreciate everything, yo. I'm going to text Friday here. Uh, for everybody who's been watching, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Um, it's been another interview here. Um, go check out my man. He's going to have some links down in the description, you know, go show him some support. You've been putting in work for a long time from a place, you know, like, uh, where it probably was pretty hard to get that support. You know, you're saying you did a show in front of 6,000 people. That's pretty crazy, bro. So props to that. And everyone, I hope everyone have a blessed night. Peace out. Peace yeah. out. Wallow. We love hip hop. Hip -hop.